I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to the Reason Advanced course. The aim of this course is to take your knowledge of Reason and music production in general to the next level by showing you various advanced techniques for using different areas of the software to inspire you and help to develop your own unique way of working. I'm assuming that you've either taken the beginner's course already or have a pretty good understanding of the software as the pace of the advanced course is much quicker. For example, you should already know about how to play with and edit audio and note clips. You should have a good idea about how to use different instruments and effects. And you've hopefully started to get used to the idea of things like envelope modulation, certainly when it comes to level and frequency. We'll be expanding all of these techniques as we work through the course though. Remember that at any point you can contact me with questions on support at reasoncourses.com or by going to the Producer Tech Forum where you can discuss issues with other students and myself. We're going to start off gently then by looking at a process that you've no doubt at least heard mentioned, and that's sidechaining. Probably the most common use of sidechaining is with a compressor, where one or more signals are being processed by the compressor, but instead of their own levels determining the nature of the compression, a completely separate signal is determining it, so that when that separate signal becomes louder, the other signals become quieter, Therefore, the signal sent to the sidechain of the compressor is normally something that wants to be clear and dominant in the mix, and not hidden or muffled by other sounds. The most common signal in dance music is probably a kick drum, and the signals being compressed by it are generally bass lines, as these sounds are most likely to conflict due to the similar frequency content. However, sometimes all other parts, such as vocals and synth lines, are compressed by the kick, creating a popular effect called pumping, used to create more energy and dynamics in a track. Let's check out sidechaining with the compressors and Reason then. I've created a simple 4-bar loop here, with a subtractor patch being triggered by a notes clip to produce a repeating bass line, and then a loop from Meet Katie's second Loopmasters sample pack loaded into Dr. Octo Rex for the drums. As the MIDI notes in the subtractor clip have no gaps, and the subtractor patch has an amplitude envelope with maximum sustain, you can hear that the bass line sounds the whole time, and there's no change in volume at any point. This lack of dynamics can make things sound flat and lifeless, and, as the bass line has lots of lower frequencies, the kick drum, which is also predominantly lower frequencies, can get lost or masked by it. One way of solving this, then, is to use a compressor on the bass line to create the pumping effect, where the level ducks on each beat. So we'll add the M-Class compressor to Subtractor, then. Now we need to create an instrument to go to the side chain of the compressor. I'm going to use Redrum. The reason being, it's got an internal pattern sequencer, so I don't need to create a notes clip for it in the main sequencer, and can set everything up on the front panel. What I want is a kick drum on every beat, so I'll select the first slot, which has a bass drum on it, then activate the steps in the pattern sequencer below. If we listen to that on its own now, you can hear that we've got the 4-4 pattern we need. Now we don't want to actually hear this kick drum in the track, but just send it to the compressor on the subtractor track, so we need to change the routing on the rear panel. You can see Redrum's stereo out is currently connected to the inputs on the mix device, or if you're using Reason 5, then they'll be going to the inputs for channel 3 on the mixer. What we need to do instead is connect the outputs to the sidechain inputs on the compressor. What this will mean is that the compressor will be triggered by the signal from Redrum, and not the signal from Subtractor, that it's actually processing. To make the effect greater, I'm going to lower the threshold and increase the ratio so the baseline signal gets squashed pretty heavily. And then also set the attack time to the minimum, so the squashing happens quickly with no delay when the kick drum is received. If I solo subtractor now, listen to the effect we get. You can clearly hear that the baseline is being compressed heavily on each beat when the compressor's sidechain is receiving the kicks from redrum, and can see the effect on the gain reduction meter too.
At the moment, the release time is set to the default amount, but we can change this to make the ducking last for more or less time, depending on how obvious you want the pumping to be. For example, a shorter time makes the bass duck very quickly, and so less noticeably, whilst a long release creates a much less subtle effect, where the bass takes a lot longer to rise in level after the kick stops. The M-Class release only goes up to 600 milliseconds, but on other compressors you can set even longer times, so that the bassline's level doesn't ever have enough time to rise back up to an uncompressed state before the next kick sounds. 600 milliseconds is about right to give you a nice pumping effect though. So, the kick in our drum loop stands out a lot more when the bass is compressed this way. However, there's actually an additional kick sounding just before beats 1 and 3, as you can hear if we listen to the drums on their own. One way we can make these additional kicks clearer in the mix is to change the redrum pattern so that kicks are added on these steps too. If I play the loop, then activate those steps, you can hear how the bass ducks at those times too, meaning that all of the kicks will be heard clearly and not just those on every crotchet or main beat of the bar. This will mean that the bass is ducking heavily on an off beat though, which will sound a bit strange. So one way of decreasing the effect slightly would be to use a lower velocity setting for the additional kicks by setting the dynamic switch to soft. This makes the kicks on those steps slightly lower in level so the resulting compression and so gain reduction on the bass line won't be as great. Of course, if you want to make the ducking effect subtler at any point, then you can just raise the compressor threshold or decrease the ratio. Another way of achieving this effect could be to use the signal coming from Rex itself as the sidechain source. This can sometimes be the best solution if you want the lower frequencies to never conflict, especially if the kick pattern in your drum track is complex or constantly changing. The way to implement this is to apply some sidechain EQ to isolate the kicks in the drum track. First though, we need to add the Spider Audio Merger and Splitter to our rack, which will enable us to send the Rex drum signal to several places at the same time. With this device, if you check out the rear panel connections, you have the merging on the left, where you can connect up to four stereo signals and have them merged to form one combined stereo signal, and then on the right side, you have the option of connecting one stereo signal and splitting it, so that you have that same signal coming out of the remaining four stereo pairs and going to any other devices on the rack. So if I take the main output of Rex and connect it to the splitter input instead of the mix device or mixer input in Reason, then I can connect the first splitter output pair to the mix device instead, and then have three more pairs that I can send anywhere else I like. What we need to do now then, is to add a filter to the rack, so I need to double click on ECF42 here. The only thing is I don't want to interrupt the signal path going into the splitter, so I'm going to hold down shift when I select the filter. This way auto routing is disabled, and the filter can be double clicked or dragged into the rack without connecting itself to anything. Now I can take the next splitter output pair and connect it to the filter input. and. Lastly, send the output of the filter to the compressor sidechain. Now if we flip the rack back round and solo our subtractor track, then when we solo the sidechain going to the compressor using the switch on the front panel, you can hear that we have our main drum loop going through the filter. With the filter set to low pass like this and the cutoff set low, you can hear that we're just left with the kick and any other low frequency sounds. 
So rather than the whole drum loop triggering the compressor, it's just the bassier parts doing it. This creates a similar effect to the compression using Redrum, only this time it's a little more natural as it's using actual parts from our song. In Reason 6, there are even easier ways to apply sidechain compression, and that's making use of the Dynamics section in the main mixer, which has a compressor in the upper half. The sidechain input for this compressor is on the rear of every mix or audio track device, as you can see. Not only does this make things tidier in the rack and give you a different character of compression, but it also has a sidechain EQ facility built in. If I first bypass the M-Class compressor, then I'm going to take the split rec signal going into the filter and connect it to the sidechain inputs on the track. You'll notice that the key switch goes active automatically. This is the switch that tells the channel's dynamics section to respond to its sidechain input and not the internal signal it's processing. Now, on the mixer, we just turn on the compressor and then set it up in a similar way to the M class. So we need a low threshold and high ratio to create a large amount of compression then we need a pretty high release. Then we need to activate the fast switch to make the attack time as short as possible, and turn on the peak switch too. Without the peak switch enabled, the compressor acts in RMS mode, and so follows the average level of the signal, and not the maximum one. So to make the compression nice and precise, we need to activate peak mode. Now if I play the bass line, you can hear that the compressor is kicking in as each drum sounds. What we need to do now then is filter off the high frequency sounds so we're just left with the kicks, like we did before with ECF42. The way we do this is by activating the filters to dynamic sidechain switch. You can then see above on the signal diagram that the filters are routing into the dynamics section and can no longer be used to filter the signal on the track itself. So if we turn on the low pass and bring down the cutoff, then we'll just be left with the kicks and other low frequency sounds as before and the bass will only compress when those parts are heard, and not when every drum in the loop is. I'm going to show you another way of setting up pumping of multiple tracks now which can be done using the mixer in all versions of Reason, and that's using the send effects. What I'll do is add an M-Class compressor to the desk as the first send effect, and I'm going to give it the same settings once again. Then I'll connect the redrum outputs into the sidechain inputs on the compressor, so it's being triggered by our kick pattern once again. Now, to route parts through the compressor, as if it's an insert rather than a send effect, I just need to turn down their faders on the mixer, then activate the switch for the first send effect, and also activate pre. This way you don't hear the signal on the track as the fader is set to zero, but you do hear the signal going to the first send effect, the level of which is set with the dial. I'm routing the bass line to the compressor, and also a new track I've added, which has NN19 on it, playing a sustained synth pad. If I play the song now, you can hear how the identical pumping effect is applied to both instruments.
Another common use of compressor sidechaining I find is when I'm making the soundtrack to something with voiceover and music, and I want the music to duck every time the voice sounds. To do this, just put a compressor on the music track and select the voiceover as the sidechain source. A similar but even more drastic effect can be produced with a gate. This is a simple effect that we've not looked at yet, but is a common one for making a track significantly cleaner, as it can be used for all sorts of purposes, most commonly for removing background noise and emphasising the loudest parts of a signal. It's called a gate because, when open, it allows a signal to pass through. But when that signal falls below a certain level, called the threshold, then the gate closes, meaning no sound or much lower level sound is heard. Setting a low threshold on a voiceover, where pretty much all of the signal is above the threshold, will just remove the background noise and gaps between the voice sounding. Whereas setting a higher threshold on a signal with rapidly varying level, like a drum beat, will shorten the decay on each transient to produce a snappier sound. Let's take a look. I've added a new Dr. Rex into the rack, playing an electro beat, so I can demonstrate the different parameters on the gate, which lives in the lower half of the Dynamics section on the Reason 6 mixer. If you're following this module with the Reason 5 session, it's still important to understand this functionality, as we'll be looking at different ways of gating instruments in both versions later on in the course. Firstly, if we turn the gate on, then, unlike a compressor, the threshold works the other way. In other words, the gate reduces the gain of the signal that goes below the threshold, not over it. So, lowering the threshold reduces the effect, as the signal is over the threshold the whole time. Raising it, on the other hand, means that the gate closes a lot more, as the signal is below the threshold most of the time. At high threshold settings, the gate is only open for the loudest drum hits, and most of the time it's closed, making most of the drums much quieter. So there we were just hearing the main kicks and snares at full volume, and the other drums were being turned down by 20 dB, which is the current range setting. We can change this to a different amount if we want to make the gate's effect subtler or more drastic, and you can see the gain reduction amount showing up on the meter above. So if we set this to the maximum, minus 40 dB, then the other drums are pretty much silenced by the gate closing, and we'll only hear the loudest hits. Occasionally, you can hear some of the other drums fading out, as, at the moment, the release time is set quite high, so the gate is taking 500 milliseconds to close. If we reduce this to 100 now, then the gate is much more abrupt, and you literally just get the loudest drums, after which the gate snaps shut to make sure none of the quieter drums are heard. I've brought down the threshold now so that the clave sound can be heard once more, and only the quietest hi-hat is being silenced by the gate. Now what I want to do is to use this drum part to control the gate on the bass track. So the way I do this is by connecting the direct output to the new Rex's mix device into the dynamics input on the subtractor's mix device. This means that the rec signal on the track, after it's passed through the gate section, is going to the bass track to control its sidechain, and not to the master section on the mixer. So the drums are only being used to control the bass, and aren't actually heard themselves. Then, once again, as the key switch has become active, we can use the drum signal to control the gate on the bass track. So, if we turn the gate on, you can hear that the gate is opening every time it receives a drum hit so the level of the bass drops in and out to create a cool pattern. As on the drum track, the range can be changed to make the bass part quieter or louder when the gate closes, and the release time sets the fade out created by the gate closing 
with a long release creating a gentle fade out on each bass stab, and a short one creating a more abrupt end to notes. There's also the hold dial, which I didn't mention before. This allows you to create a longer, sustained bass stab of the duration set by the dial, rather than brief bass stabs the same length as the drum hits. Lastly, the threshold can be used to change the number of bass stabs in exactly the same way as changing the threshold on the gate of the drum track. So, the higher it goes, the less bass stabs you get as the less drum hits are loud enough to make the gate stay open. I'll have a play with this now to show you what I mean, and then I'll switch the pumping compressor back in on top so you can hear the cool effect produced by the two types of level modulation coinciding. The last effect I want to demonstrate sidechaining with is the ECF42 filter, where a signal can be made to act on the filter's envelope to create some interesting frequency-related effects, either on their own or to accompany the changes to dynamics already seen with the compressor and gate. On the beginner's course we started to look at envelope modulation with Dr. Octo Rex and various other instruments, and how it can be used to create rhythmic filter patterns based on the amplitude of the signal. So let's see how the sidechain can take this a step further. What we're going to do is to use the drum loop that was just triggering the bass line of our gate to trigger the envelope of a filter on the bass part instead. This basically creates a more interesting sound than using a gate, as you're shaping the frequencies of the sound, and not just the level. Just as a little reminder, if I play the drum loop we're going to use as the trigger source once again, and then lower the filter frequency, you can hear that the higher frequencies are removed, and we're just left with the bass. Then, if we increase the filter envelope amount, you can hear that the filter frequency is being modulated upwards when each drum hits, so we get the high frequencies back. And the timing with which the filter frequency modulates is controlled by the envelope sliders alongside. So if we want to create a briefer burst of high frequencies, then we can bring the decay amount down or to extend the slide up at the start, we just increase the attack time. If I add ECF42 to Subtractor then, and keep it in low pass mode, and bring the cutoff down, then we'll get the same removal of the higher frequencies on the bass. Now we just need to feed the drum signal into the filter so it can be used to trigger the envelope. You can see on the rear that we have an envelope gate connector. This allows you to connect the gate signal from another device in order to trigger the filter's envelope. So if we look down on Rex, you can see we have a gate output which we can connect into the filter's gate input. 
Now, the filter envelope becomes active and is being triggered by the signal it receives. In other words, every time a drum in the loop sounds, a gate signal is sent, which causes the filter to modulate by an amount set using the envelope amount dial and according to the timing set using the ADSR envelope dials. So, the filter effect will be pretty much the same as it was on Rex, only now we're filtering the bass instead. Another option here is to directly connect the gate signal from Rex to the gate input on subtractor. You can see we have three gate inputs on the rear panel, one for each of the envelopes, so amplitude, filter and modulation. This means that if you're using Reason 5 and want to create a similar gating effect to before on the Reason 6 mixer, then you can actually connect the gate signal to the amplitude envelope input and then the drum hits will cause the amplitude envelope to very briefly trigger after which you can change the release time to make the bass stabs fade out more or less gradually. Or you can connect the gate input to the filter envelope input to get exactly the same effect as we had with ECF below, only we're using the subtractor filter instead. So that's given you an idea of the kind of sounds you can make with relatively simple parts just through using side chaining and envelope modulation on effects. Have a play around with the parts in the session, combining different effects to hear the results you can achieve, and then try and create the same results in a track of your own. If you have any questions, then you can contact me on support at reasoncourses.com or by going to the Producer Tech forum. And also, don't forget to download the advanced course packs containing all of the Reason song files as well as the included samples and instrument presets, which you can find at the top of the main course page with all the movie links on. Next time, we're going to be looking at some more advanced mixing techniques. See you then.